Welcome to the FIFA World Cup Qatar 2022 monthly magazine show. In this first episode, we recap Qatar's journey in the last 10 years. The winner to organize the 222 FIFA World Cup is Qatar. This was the moment when the world discovered that the Middle Eastern state of Qatar had won the right to host the FIFA World Cup in 2022. The date was the 2nd of December 2010, and there were euphoric scenes in Doha, the capital city of Qatar. Ali Issa was 20 years old and was at the heart of the celebrations. He was ecstatic with the news and remembers the announcement well. When Blatter pulled out the envelope, Qatar's name was on it. I think many people thought they were dreaming. I was one of them. Qatar will host the World Cup in 2022. It's all wonderful memories. But the moment that Blatter announced Qatar would host the World Cup, it made the whole Arab world ecstatic. Qatar is a small country, but with giant aspirations. And the work began immediately to create a complete infrastructure suitable for welcoming millions of football fans to the biggest show on earth. We viewed sports not just purely as a participatory event or something that we can come and host or whatever, but it always was an opportunity. It was always a catalyst. It was always a vehicle to take us from one state to another, from one position to another. We we're crazy about football. We love football. The Middle East is, you know, one of the most passionate regions that loves this game from all walks of life and all walks of society. Qatar is no exception. The Arab world really wanted to host this tournament. You know, there's a passion for it, and we believe that we were in a position to be able to host and prepare ourselves to host it on behalf of the Middle East and the Arab world. Eight football stadiums have been planned specifically for the FIFA World Cup and all will be completed by the end of this year. Dreamt up by some of the world's leading architects, the stadiums for the first World Cup in the Middle East are some of the most ambitious, visually exciting venues ever conceived. They're designed to reflect the rich culture of Qatar. And while it's important for Qatar to honor its past, the stadiums have been built with three leading edge priorities in mind. Access and comfort, sustainability, and post-tournament legacy. Each stadium had a unique story beyond the World Cup, beyond being a stadium. Our aim was for the, st for the, for the stadium itself to be a center for the community. Now, that's, having said that, of course, you know, we ensure that each stadium is unique, represents something unique at attached to the heritage of, of uh, the state of Qatar and the Arab world. The transport infrastructure has been completely transformed in Qatar. If we look at the metro lines, uh, we wanted to make sure that most of the stadiums are accessible by these metro stations. Also the road infrastructure, which is almost, almost complete. We're probably around 90-95% complete with all the roads infrastructure. I mean, you see this huge change uh, in the roads here in Qatar. And uh, for us, we feel that, you know, It'll make it very easy for the fans to get from, from one place to the other. Fans would actually be having the opportunity to see more than one game in a day. And I don't think, you know, this is ever going to happen again. of hospitality that they will receive as soon as they set foot in the country, uh, the compact nature allowing them to see multiple matches, and also the cultural activities that will go on around the World Cup from concerts, fan fests, uh, visiting museums, the dunes, the desert. Um, there's a rich fabric uh, of activities for people to explore and discover. Since Qatar was named as host of the 2022 FIFA World Cup, Ali Issa, like all the residents of Qatar, has marveled at the speed of the way the nation has developed. 
The historical day of December 2nd, 2010 will forever be etched on my mind and the minds of all Qataris. I hope I live to see this historic event. The 1st of February 2019 was a day of huge celebrations for the Qatar national football team. When the final whistle blew at Zayed Sports City Stadium in Abu Dhabi, Qatar had beaten Japan 3-1, and in doing so, had won their maiden continental title. This was the perfect springboard for the country that will host the FIFA World Cup in November and December 2022. The tournament's leading assist maker, Akram Afif, with 10 to his credit, and top goal scorer, Al Moaz Ali, who set a new tournament record with nine goals, were key to this victory. Their incredible story began under the tutelage of Felix Sanchez at the Aspire Academy in Qatar. The head coach developed this group of young players and turned them into Asian champions. Very happy for, for the players and all the people in Qatar that they are supporting us from the beginning. Very well deserved, very happy, no words. For the players, it was the culmination of years of hard work, learning from some of the greatest football minds using the latest methods in one of the most advanced footballing environments in the world. Aspire Academy was founded in 2004 to scout and help develop Qatari athletes, while also providing them with secondary school education. And here were two of its finest students celebrating on a global footballing stage. Spire Academy has certainly made me the professional player I am now. It has paved the way for us to become professional players. It has provided us national team players with so many fond memories going back to our early club careers. It has helped us tremendously, both in our studies and football careers. When we were kids, we were only focused on football. But when we entered the academy, we learned what football was all about while continuing our studies. We became very good students, as well as very good footballers. Young footballers at the academy are given the opportunity to test themselves regularly against international competition. Every year since 2012, Aspire Academy has hosted its own prestigious football tournament. The Alcas International Cup brings 12 of the world's best football academies to Qatar for 12 days of football. Back in 2013, exactly six years before the Asian Cup success, the head coach, Felix Sanchez, was the mastermind behind a 3-1 victory for Aspire Academy against their Liverpool counterparts. Scoring one of the goals that day was Akram Afif. With positive development like this, the vision, commitment and investment has certainly been worth it. Fast forward six years to February 2019. And having returned home as national heroes, the Asian champions had no time to rest on their laurels. Participation in the 2019 Copper America was their next step. The 2020 global pandemic halted Qatar's on-field plans, 
but a full calendar of fixtures in Europe, North America and a second Copper America venture later this year will ensure that the 2022 hosts will be ready for their biggest challenge ever. Three hundred and twenty-six days after French fans celebrated their second FIFA World Cup triumph, the 850 matches plus qualifying process for the next edition started in June 2019. For some, World Cup triumph means something very different to being crowned champions or even reaching the finals. The launch of that long and winding road to the 22nd FIFA World Cup was in Asia. Pakistan and 11 other nations entered a preliminary knockout phase. Pakistan made me. We came here despite the tough situation in Pakistan. Some players couldn't come, but most of us did. We are here for our country and for this flag. We love representing our nation and we'll make them proud. Trailing Cambodia 2-0, Pakistan pulled one back with this first half penalty by their Danish-based captain Hassan Bashir. But two unanswered second half goals brought an end to Pakistan's dream of reaching Asia's first round group stage. I think it's great to be here in Qatar, to be the first team to actually be here. You know, I think it's a good experience for all of us and a little taster of what could come. So hopefully, you know, it's a good um, motivation to be here um, on a more regular basis. Pakistan! For the first time, FIFA did not stage a centralised qualifying draw. Asia was the first to map out the road to Qatar for its 40 remaining nations last July. Group winners and the top four runners-up will advance to the final 12-team qualifying stage. CAF held the draw for the next stage of their qualifiers last January in Cairo. The six rounds of 10 group matches are scheduled between June and October this year. The 10 group winners will go into a further draw for five final playoff series. Following a six-month delay, South America's qualifying started last October. Colombia's 6-1 humbling by Ecuador was their worst qualifier defeat in 43 years. With 14 rounds of matches to be played, Los Cafeteros are hoping to return to the big stage for the seventh time. The situation for this second stage, third stage. The CONCACAF draw was held at the FIFA headquarters in Zurich last August. A new format has placed 30 of their 35 members in a preliminary qualifying process. Three nations will emerge to join the Confederation's top five sides in the expanded final octagonal round. Europe were the last to stage their draw. UEFA's 10 group winners, along with three playoff victors, will make up the continent's 13-team contingent for the finals in Qatar in 2022. Two-time Oceania finalists New Zealand and 10 of their fellow OFC nations are slated to start their delayed qualifying process in late June. Pakistan's participation ensured that for the first time all FIFA's member associations entered qualifiers. Of the 211 entrants, 185 are still in contention. They'll face each other and a global pandemic on and off the field when qualifiers in Asia, Europe, South America and CONCACAF resume in earnest in March. The hosts of the 22nd FIFA World Cup have had to wait longer than all previous hosts for their time to arrive. 
A decade on from their award, and there are still 22 months to the big kickoff. Qatar has been literally rebuilding a whole country, not just eight stadiums. Much of this mega construction project has been part of the Qatar National Vision 2030. When we came to, you know, to, to plan for the World Cup, we did not come and impose the World Cup requirements on the country's development plans. We looked at the country's overall development plans, we looked at the country's aspirations, and we used the World Cup as a vehicle, as an accelerator, to push start some projects and to ensure that they delivered on time and on budget, and at the same time, you know, or, or to view the World Cup as a milestone to achieve certain goals that then will allow us to achieve the bigger goals. Construction of the eight FIFA World Cup Qatar 2022 venues started in December 2014. Khalifa International Stadium was the first of the proposed FIFA World Cup Qatar 2022 venues to complete its redevelopment in May 2017. We've been working hard as an organizing committee for the World Cup with the host country. The development so far has been immense. I mean, you look at the infrastructure, um, the readiness of the stadiums. So now we're really focusing on the operational aspects and the fan experience aspects of the tournament. The tournament emblem was revealed on the 3rd of September 2019, a milestone that gave the Arab world's first FIFA World Cup its own distinct identity. The emblem is heavily, heavily influenced by the local tradition and the local culture. It's a representative of the, of the shawl, and the shawl is, a, is, is a, a piece of fabric that men wear uh, during the winter. Women also wear it uh, as, a, as a shawl does. It represents different parts of the, of the Arab region and the MENA region as well. And uh, just like other, other elements of the World Cup, is heavily based and reflective of, of the local culture. While the Education City Stadium had a virtual launch, the Al Janoub Stadium had enjoyed its grand opening with the 2019 Amir Cup Final. The Ahmed bin Ali Stadium became the fourth venue to be in full operational mode during the 2020 Amir Cup Final. 2021 will see the launch of the four remaining World Cup venues. The 24th of July 2020. The 16th season of the Qatar Stars League resumed its schedule after a 139 day hiatus. Football, like all aspects of life, came to a complete halt last year. To restart, football authorities would have to plan meticulously to combat the spread of COVID-19. And when football did resume, there was no doubt who the heroes were. Our scope was to provide medical assistance to everybody in the country, whether players, officials, delegates, uh, uh, spectators, uh, contractors, broadcasters, uh, workforce, volunteers, everybody must receive medical primary and emergency medical coverage. With such extensive care, Qatar Stars League crowned their 2019-20 season in late August. The Asian Football Confederation took note of that achievement and sought Qatar's assistance to stage their own interrupted prime club competition in a centralized format in Qatar. When we heard that Qatar would be hosting the Asian Champions League, I had a strange feeling, being the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic. We still had not recovered from the pandemic. People were still afraid of gatherings and tournaments. But Qatar is used to facing challenges and succeeding. This characteristic is embedded in us. We accept the challenge and take responsibility. No country hosted more top-level football matches at the end of 2020 than Qatar. 76 first-class matches involving teams from 12 different countries took place in Qatar between September and December. 
with all functional areas operating in a strictly regulated biosecure environment. The planning was a two-stage process. We, on the, in the first stage, there's the planning for a big football um, tournament, and of course we have the Supreme Committee for Delivery and Legacy, and they've been working on this for several years now. So they already had things in place, and it obviously just needed to be um, geared towards this tournament. But then the second part of the planning was how to cope with COVID-19, and that required a, quite a different approach, and we needed to get um, input from many different people, uh, including uh, health and safety and COVID compliance and so on. Korea Republic's Ulsan Hyundai were crowned Asia's top club side at the Al Janoub Stadium. They will represent Asia in the FIFA Club World Cup Qatar 2020, the next international competition Qatar will be organising. Nine years after Qatar was awarded the hosting rights of the FIFA World Cup, the country staged its first full FIFA competition in December 2019. Club champions of FIFA's six member confederations and their fans descended on Qatar to contest the 15th FIFA Club World Cup. The Club World Cup in 2019 became a festival, uh, not only just a football festival, but it was just a big festival a musical festival, a sporting festival, a cultural festival, and so on. There was a lot of gems that we picked up from these. It confirmed that we needed to do and continue doing is communicating to fans, listening to fans. We went to Liverpool. We spoke to the spirit of Shankar. We spoke to Liverpool fans. We engaged with the, uh, with the Flamingo fans. We engaged uh, with, with the Mexican fans. We engaged with the Tunisian. We listened to them. What, what was it? What was the concerns? What was the issues? Highlighting the issues, communicating to them what Qatar was like. Flamengo fans needed very little encouragement, as they'd been waiting 38 years for this moment. Over 10,000 of them had to make last-minute arrangements to travel 11,000 kilometers to watch their beloved Rubo Negro repeat their 1981 triumph over Liverpool in the old Intercontinental Cup. Sadly for them, Liverpool's Brazilian star, Roberto Firmino, sealed a 1-0 extra-time victory for the Reds, their first ever FIFA Club World Cup title. I think one of the, one of the highlights, at least for me personally, was Liverpool winning, you know, champions of the world. It was a great tournament. I mean, we wanted to implement, you know, part of the small little plans that we always talked about, that we were, wanted to implement during the World Cup, during the Club World Cup. The COVID-19 global pandemic affected Qatar's plans to welcome more international fans to the upcoming FIFA Club World Cup edition. FIFA and local authorities have, however, agreed to allow local fans in, albeit in limited numbers. Qatar Stars League champions will represent the hosts and open the tournament against Egypt's Al Ali. Al Duhail. We have an important challenge, um, league, Emir Cup, Qatar Cup, World Cup Championship and Champions League. We are so proud to represent Qatar and we want to do our best. This is our target. UEFA representatives Bayern Munich will aim to replicate Liverpool's success and keep the FIFA Club World Cup trophy in Europe for the eighth consecutive season while FIFA and the local organisers will test two more proposed venues for the biggest show on earth. Next month, we take a look back at the FIFA Club World Cup Qatar 2020. We'll visit the Qatara Cultural Village for an international Arabian horse festival. And we'll reveal what Qatar's first public holiday of the year is all about. <laughs>